I've just had a message from my wife to say she's coming back with the children and will be home in about 10 minutes. If there's ever a reason to go and wet a worm in the rain, it's because the kids are about to come home. Ginster's pie. Oh, yeah, why not? Bob worms. Maggots. Head torch still charging. Never mind, take that. Keys. Right, where have I put my keys? It's been pouring down with rain and I expect it's going to be running brown um, and I expect that there may be a few trouble maybe if I'm really lucky some barble let's give it a go so I'm going to start off fishing right underneath my rod tip just in front of that, that tree there because if I do catch a fish I expect they're probably going to start to back off a little bit downstream. If I start off down there, I've got no backup plan if I'm lucky enough to catch one or two. I'll be pleased with, with a chub because it's been years since I caught one. Uh, wouldn't it be lovely to catch a barbel though? I'm taking a bit of a gamble here because normally I'd fish right tight to the bank underneath the tree, trees. But with it being all coloured up like this, I'm just hoping the fish will be coming out feeding quite openly in, in the main channel where it's much clearer of snags. So first cast, I've got that little tap and just as this rain's come in I thought I would just check the bait because I did have that little tap, lifted the rod up into a really hard snag and had to pull for the break. So I better re-tackle. Three pound hook length which I'll fold over and put some swan shot on. It's a little bit cheaper than buying Arsley bombs. I do have some in here, but... That's one. There you are. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to go for a size six hook. And I'm going to hair rig a big dirty piece of luncheon meat on the back. I'm going to leave quite a long hair. This is just the main line that I've got on the reel, six pound main line on a size six Drennan Barber's hook. Other end, I'm not going to bother with a swivel, there's no point in losing more tackle. Just going to do a loop to loop. So there's my hook length, it's only about a foot long. Thread my weak link on like that. And the idea of that obviously is so if this gets snagged, that line breaks to form a main line. Yeah, our free running rig. Just attach the hook. Get them on. Hair stop. There you go. Right, cast it straight back out into that snag. <laughs> Curiosity's got the better of me. I'm gonna have to see if the uh, bait's still on or if in, indeed it's snagged. That first cast was going nowhere. Yeah, that's come out fine, no problem. <coughs> they are, bait's gone. This step. Good sign though. You know, that's really very positive because if I show you the spot that I'm fishing, you'd take one look at it and I'd ask you where you would cast to. And the obvious answer is, uh, you know, tight to the bank under there, down there, but actually right down here in front of us is where it gets most um, flow. You can see the eddy coming back round like that, it's a big pool here where the, the current actually comes back round. And where we've got this sunken tree, there's a little bit of cover for them. And the channel narrows, it's got a little pinch point. It's a nice little bottleneck to funnel all the food down into one spot. Right, pay attention this time. In fact, what I'm going to do, because I'm fishing so close quarters, is just slacken the line off a little bit. Because they might be feeling that rot tip a little bit too early.
a long time ago, I used to bring the uh, local scout group down here, sort of six or seven of them at a time, and uh, one of them came up to me in the evening and said, I'm really sorry, but someone's stolen your fishing rod. And I thought, obviously, that they had stolen it and hid it in the bushes or something. But after a while, I had a good old look around, lost, pulled all my hair out and the rest of it. And it turns out, I just saw the rod butt sticking out the water. Of course, a little, little chub, only that big, just taking the rod round, taking the whole lot in. So, moral of the story, never turn your back on a rod. We've got some lovely features down there. And again on the opposite bank. It's almost like a channel within a channel. If you look at the way that water's flowing, it's like it's uh, it's coming in down like that, coming across the river, round to my bank, and then back over around the other way. And it doesn't matter what you do to canalise a river, it's always going to try and um, meander. I've got some interest in my rod tip here, so. Started to go around. Yeah, fish on. Don't really want to give him an inch. There we are. Undo that bail on. That fish has certainly been around the block, hasn't it? Not the healthiest of looking fish, but let's have a closer look. Old log head. Come on bud. Lip hooks. Lovely. Hook out. Now for a free public stretch, you can't argue with that, can you? Terrible scarring down its flank there. His uh, anal fins in a right old mess. But it's a chub nevertheless. I think it's a good old little scrap. Oh, that flank's not too bad. Let's uh, put him back in. It's been ages since I've caught something on bait. I'm going to talk about that in a moment. Uh, getting back in the water. If there's a shoal of fish like that knocking about down there, they're going to make short work of those four or five bait dropped. Um, bait droppers of luncheon meat and pellet, so need to reload that probably before I put a line back in with bait. There we go, so bait dropper. A bit like a swim feeder. Just put the hook down into the, through the hook, cork in the bottom, fill that up with food, close it up. Hook goes over the top and then when it sinks down, plop, there's all your bait. If you start balling bait into eight foot of water when it's chugging through like this, it will just scatter it everywhere. This is the old original John Wilson Avon Quiver and uh, they were really popular. They came with two rod tips and they were, um, I think it's still written on here, it was a, uh, oh, blimey, can I read that? One and a quarter pound test curve rod, three to six pound reel line on the, on the butt there. And they were so popular he, um, he sold out to Masterline and this is the second generation of uh, John Wilson rods with a cork handle that goes all the way through. They're fantastic rods for, for um, fishing on small rivers like this. It's only since the dawn of carp fishing that they've gradually become out, gone out of favour and they come with a, a section with a quiver tip top and a second section with a float top. And on the old version the float top has the screw fitting at the end so you can screw in a, uh, a swing tip. So anyone that follows my vlogs will probably be aware that, of the fact that most of them are on kayak fishing, lure fishing and fly fishing. And I haven't done enough of this sort of thing. And what prompted me to do this actually was listening to um, a guy on a podcast talking about bait fishing. He's struggling to understand why people would want to bait fish. when you can fly fish or lure fish, because all fish are predators. But the real simple answer is that you want to fish in a way that sets you a reasonable challenge. 
It's also really nice to sit down and just chill. And when there's been a deluge of rain like there has been of late, that's the one time this river really comes to life. You can't go fly fishing on a trout stream and wonder what's going to be at the end of your line like you can here. There's 13 different species of fish that I've caught here, probably more to boot. And that's exciting in its own right. The reason I took up fly fishing in Lewis is I'm not very good, I'm not very patient. I'm not sure how long I can sit here watching a rod tip. It needs to be doing something. I might actually take that bait dropper off that float rig and trot a nice big lump of meat along the bottom here and be, or maybe that extra free movement of the meat rolling through will um, give the fish the confidence to take it a little bit more readily. Good old spam. It is blooming lovely isn't it? Mm. I'm going to set the float to about eight foot almost to the point where it's impossible to cast. I've got all the bulk of the shot about a foot away from the hook bait. Let's get it down there. <laughs> right, really. I'm losing the bait, but the bite's not exactly savage. The float's just dragging. Let's try a smaller hook bait, very hook. I'm going to keep lifting the float back up and popping it back down just to make the meat trundle along. What would we like for a shot? Drag, good. Try and hold it back a little bit. Because the water sure as hell isn't moving as quickly along the bottom as it is along this surface. At this point I'm using the length of the rod to try and keep the float going down the correct line not being pushed in artificially towards the bank. You want to follow that natural flow. Hold it back to make the meat kick back up and let it go. See the caught on the bottom, all that's sliding away so I'm going to strike. Hooking the meat, I'm just laying the shank against the side of the meat. Like that. Pushing it down and then rolling it. So the hook point's showing. Just. Well, that paid off. Quite sure what I'm connected to, but that did pay off. No idea where this thing's working. I'm just casting over into the slack in the opposite bank underneath the tree. Actually, just out of the current with the float. I've got a little feeling this might be a barber for that Certainly charging around with a little bit more. Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, awesome. Let's keep him in the water until uh, until the camera's set up. So it gave a much better account for itself than uh, the chub did. Lip hooked. So we'd like to see. Barbers hook. What's that then? It's probably pushing on for 
pushing on for two and a three quarters, maybe three pounds. It's been perfect though. Isn't that pucker? Lovely barbel. They need their oxygen though, so let's get it back. Get back in. Probably one of my um, biggest bugbears about vloggers and people that do loads on social media is the length of time they keep fish out the water for. It's good to go now. Who wants to go? Great. Looking for cover in my net. You're not going to get it in my net, mate. If someone finds out about the barbell in here because they've watched my video, then great. <laughs> yeah. Put this quiver, in, quiver back out. That's me look, trying to switch off my camera on top of my hat. <laughs> I changed hats, of course. I think I've had more fun this afternoon here in the local town park five minutes down my road than I did down at Sea Town uh, when I caught that toe. Had its moments, of course. But I consider the amount of time and effort invested. Funny enough, it was the corona pandemic that made me uh, show a little bit more interest in my local river again. Not being able to travel or feeling guilty travelling. And the other thing is just getting involved with Bristol Rivers Trust. I met up with a guy this morning to see if we could do some monitoring. It's quite funny actually because all the baiting up I've done is in this main channel here, just in front of the, the willow that's fallen into the water. But that barbel was picked up just on the other side of the uh, the reed that you can see up there, where it shallows up quite considerably. It's actually a big bed of silt. It's amazing to think that it's obviously sat there all this time and not not come out to take any of the food that's gone in. It's just picking up the odd scrap that's washing back round. So I'm going to take a risk and just fish in that shallow area behind those reeds. And actually, that's that's the river chill all over, really. You, you'll find it very, very difficult to draw these fish out from where they feed. There's so much natural food in here, and quite a lot of pressure, actually. They, they don't really need to come out to, to feed on, on baited areas, unless they feel it's safe to do so. It's been a, a good 45 minutes to an hour since I last put some baiting on the bait dropper. I'm wondering whether perhaps now might be an idea to get some more baiting for it before dusk kicks in. I've got to keep an eye on my rod. So there we go. Packed full of luncheon meat and uh, trout pellets. I was teaching a, um, a vicar and his son few uh, fishing basics on Friday and um, he was asking me what's happened to all the barbel in the Bristol Avon catchment and uh, the, the first answer that sprung to mind was the classic one, the yeah, otters. I actually stopped fishing this river because of the amount of otters that I was seeing and the reduction in, in fish. But ecology as always has a way of balancing itself out and um, evidently they don't eat all the fish if the environments as it should be they should be able to coexist and frankly barbel don't really exist very well in slow moving rivers they've only been in the bristol avon catchment since the mid 80s i think someone a little bit longer in the tooth will correct me you know these these barbel they need they need flowing water they need moving water they need natural food they can't just exist on fishermen's bait and they're not going to get it in a in a canal or a river that uh, that looks like and behaves like a canal. It's 
it's getting to that time of evening where I'd really expect things to pick up. Um, all the indicators are there. You've got coots going up onto the, the um, branches to roost. Just seeing my first bat fly down. And the dead giveaway is the, um, the chavs in the car park behind me are just starting to turn up to smoke their weed and eat their McDonald's. For dinner, I'm eating a um, this is a, a Ginster's pie, 15% uh, beef, British made, and uh, yeah, it's really nice. I'd recommend it. Yes, brav. As soon as it got too dark to film, the rod tips thumped round. Similar sort of size fish actually. Um, gave me a bit more of a scrap. He's throwing the hook by the looks of it. Yeah. Still got plenty of energy. As I said earlier, oh, these barbs want to be quick, so let's just try and get that in a decent bit of light. That's the best I can do, I'm afraid. <laughs> but it's dark, and that's barbell number two, which means there's no coincidence I didn't just catch a freak fish. They're in here and thriving, which is fantastic news, and uh, I think I'll settle on that. Go home, have some dinner, and have a beer. Get it back now. <laughs> 